Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, I had a lot of requests to look at Clear Linux. Now, there's a little bit of discrepancy. There's a Clear Linux and there's a Clear OS. I'm not sure which ones people were mostly asking about. But Clear Linux has come out of the woodwork into kind of blowing up pretty big all of a sudden. Um, Infinity Galactic, I think, yesterday did a video saying, is this the next Ubuntu? Definitely check out his video. He's able to show you a lot of a lot of the um, what the distribution looks like. I'm not going to show you that today. Um, there, there's a couple quick reasons. Uh, to get it running, you need to run it on VirtualBox 6 if you're doing it on a virtual machine. This computer has Virtual Machine 5, and I cannot update it right now due to some of the production that I need to be doing on it and I just can't have it risking breaking. I thought then about going on and installing VirtualBox 6 onto my Arch system, but Arch Labs has something goofy with the kernels and it keeps on trying to install the wrong kernel headers and so VirtualBox won't run over there. So I installed it onto a USB drive and I said, well, I'll just run it on some bare metal. Um, can't get any software to install on it. So uh, I could not install any screen recorders. Um, simple screen recorder is not in the repo. Uh, GUC view, whatever that is, view is not in the repos. OBS is the only one in the repos. That would not install. Nothing else would install in the system. So um, with that, now some of that it's not doesn't mean it's a bad distribution. Um, it just means that you know something somewhere in the configuration is messed up, and it was a full work day today. I only had a limited amount of time to get working. But I finally said, you know, I'm not going to spend any more time on this. If you've seen GNOME, you've seen this distribution. It's really not any different. It, it has, under the hood, there are some things that are quite a bit different about it. As far as the user perspective, the end basic desktop home user, it's going to be a distribution that is ground up. So it's not based on Debian and not based on Arch, not based on Solace, not based on Ubuntu, not based on anything else. It's its own thing. It's completely built ground up. All of the software in it are curated, but they also support flat packs as well. And the system itself, it runs on GNOME 3.32.2. It runs very snappy. It was taking 1.6 gigs of RAM when I tested it. And uh, it did run very well, very snappy. Of course, that's on this system with a Ryzen 5. That raises the point. This is a distribution that is most streamlined for use with Intel hardware. I was running it on my Ryzen 5. It did seem to run fine, other than that whole could not install software, which I'll look into why that is. There could be a variety of different things, um, and I just didn't have the opportunity to troubleshoot it. But we're gonna talk about some specific things. And as you can tell from my, my title here, is this clarity to the Linux world or is this a little bit of concern? And uh, you, you, you might need your hat today, so make sure you have a hat handy uh, just in the event that you will need it um, because we're going to dive into what some of the things some people aren't necessarily saying that make me scratch my head and go, hmm, I'm not sure I care. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I do care and I think it's going in the wrong direction. That is some of the uh, some of the, the points I want to make. So we already said it's a ground up Linux. It's its own complete thing, its own complete package manager, um, which I tried that and the software store could not get software installed anyway. Um, it is not based on anything. And like I said, it is optimized for Intel. Why is this? Well, this is where uh, this is where you might need a little bit of your hat. So go ahead and set your hat on for just a second. This is a Linux distribution that is built by the Intel team. Now we all know that Intel has that exciting little Intel management engine, this little operating system based on Minix that is in everybody's Intel systems that we cannot turn off. And a lot of people say, is this some back door? So here is now on top of having this back dooriness, now we're having that very company that made that system that has this proprietary lockdown operating system running on all these Intel computers now coming out and saying, here is a Linux distribution. So you can take our hats off at this point in time, take with that information what you will. So that being said, um, as Infinity Galactic uh, indicated in his video, what makes this distribution something that, that the reason he compares this so much to Ubuntu is it kind of came out of absolutely nowhere. And now they have the they, they have the, the manuals, they have the website, they have all, all this stuff. But when I'm looking over this system, there are some things that concern me. Number one, 
Looking at their website, it is very clear their website is super, super ultra corporate. Now on this homepage, you don't really see. You see just some basic things, you know, basic softwares. Uh, we have cloud controls. What are the simple features? This page is very good and basically has the information. Now where we dive into this, if we go into the about page, I have seen this building websites several times where we'll be working on some huge corporate organization's website and some marketing hack wrote their content and I have literally sat down and read the content. I have comprehended every word and I have not a faintest clue what in the world they're trying to say. And when I start seeing this, I see some system that is trying to be biz speak, I'll call it. It's trying to it's trying to be more than it is. It's trying to utilize the psychology of some of the the tools and the resources. We see it a lot. Where's that page I saw it the most? Um, it's it's literally talking about what the, uh, that's not where I wanted to go. Um, here's our documentation. Oh, it was on our software tab. We'll get to it. So again, we have our documentation. You can tell that this is written by a computer company because all the documentation is here. And it is, it, it, this is like, the, if you've heard, may have heard me tell this Microsoft joke, right? So there's this helicopter pilot. He's in training, right? So he's flying over Seattle airspace, really foggy, rainy day, like usual in Seattle. All right. And so they're flying around. We got the, the guy that's learning. We have the instructors in the helicopter. All of a sudden, the, all the helicopter navigation goes out. All the lights go out. Everything shorts out. Nothing works in the helicopter. They're still flying. So the, the, the trainee's like, I don't know what to do. I just have no idea what I need to do here, right? And so all of a sudden, the instructor takes the handles of the helicopter, and he sees this big meeting going on in some building. So they fly fairly close. They grab some paper, and they pen up. Where am I? And the people in the boardroom grab a big poster and they write down sh 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 all over and they hold up a sign. It says, you are in a helicopter. Five minutes later, they're safely on the ground at the airport. And the co-pilot looks at the pilot and says, how in the world did you get us back from that poster? He says, I knew that had to be the Microsoft building. Only computer engineers would give us information that's completely accurate and totally useless. And if you read through this documentation, this is totally accurate and completely useless. Um, we get a lot of information about the, you know, here's our getting started, um, pre-install, uh, looking down at the guides. So this is actually the documentation. This is literally all the documentation for their package manager. They even in say it manages replacing apt or yum by ins installing bundles rather than packages. And you go through here, they don't tell you at all how to install anything. I kind of stumbled through and figured it out. Of course, everything failed here. They're just focusing so much on this auto update stuff. We're going to get into that in a minute, but this is literally what's supposed to be their package manager. This is all of the information that they have. And I found that it was completely useless. There's not a word in here that's comprehensible English, although it's technically completely correct. So here is the software. You will find that they do have a variety of software available. The things you might find in Solace, even as that is uh, as that is more carried, we can see that we have the bundle, which is basically the way Linux is doing packages. We also have flat packs for several of these as well. So if you, however you like them, flat packs, some bundles, some of them you will have both, like Blender. Some of them only one of them, like Audacity, will only be a flat pack. Um, We'll get to the downloads in a moment. And then of course, this is where we get the deep corporateness. So here we have, we're referencing all these stacks. So data analytics reference stack. I literally read this paragraph five times. I haven't a clue what they're talking about, but they're talking about this. This is all this stack, which makes everything work. I'm looking at this going, this is every operating system has this. So we get this type of information. Maybe I just misunderstand. I don't know. But when I see what they're doing on the website, I see something that has, they've shown, thrown so much corporate money behind it. That makes me concerned. All right. Um, and in the distribution itself, why I am a little bit more concerned about this is there's a few interesting things. Number one is they have telemetry. Now, their telemetry, in theory, looks only for kernel crashes and things like this. 
it is disabled. Uh, well, excuse me, it's not disabled by default. In the installer, it gives you the option to enable it. You have to go through a telemetry screen where you check on or check off telemetry. And then it does have all this telemetry stuff. It always gathers the report. And if telemetry has been disabled, it deletes the report. If telemetry has not been disabled, then it sends the report on. That's an interesting feature. Why, if you say don't collect telemetry, why does it collect the report to begin with? That's an interesting question I would have. The second thing is that you know on this channel that I, I talk about being responsible with your things. And that means you don't just push an update just because there's an update. A lot of things break when you do that. And a lot of times we don't have the ability. This system by default auto updates everything. It's like Windows. It auto updates everything out of the box. You can disable that feature, but out of the box, it auto updates everything. It is a rolling distribution, so it's always going to be the latest features. And if you even watch that video on their homepage, they talk about how, you know, you're going to miss out on, on these great features. I, I don't want the features to change in the software. So it raises questions for me. So ultimately for me, I find the system to be their website is very corporate. Even in the OS itself, it's very corporate. You pull up the thing and on the bottom, it'll have, you know, clear Linux, the logo, and there's a literal star on that thing. And there's a little asterisk down to the bottom to literally indicate it's like a little legal disclosure. Other things may be the, the property of, of other entities. It's weirdly corporate, weirdly corporate to me. Now, getting on to the download, if you want to test it out, like I said, if you want to test it out, you have to be using VirtualBox 6. Since I couldn't get that running, I end up just burning it to an ISO, um, kicking out my drive in my uh, IC dock and running it over there. I wanted to get stuff installed, give it a better test. I couldn't get anything installed on the system. So that's kind of where I was left. But if you are looking at this, um, you grab the, uh, uh, the full one here. This is the one that I was actually using for testing. Now, if you check the documentation for installing it in VirtualBox, it will tell you to grab the VirtualBox one. There is a VMware, but there is not a VirtualBox image in this system. You will see that there are some, uh, a variety of them for different items as well. Here's an IoT Edge single node. So there's definitely some corporate applications. This is definitely a Linux system that's not necessarily geared towards the desktop home user. It's more geared towards a very specific corporate application integrating AI features. It's one of the things in the in the systems, uh, cloud, Azure, all these kinds of things. So is it entirely bad? No. Is it something that's going to take over the Linux desktop? Absolutely not. It's, I, I'd see, I don't see this as a, as a desktop Linux. I see it as, uh, as, uh, a fringe system Linux, something for more, um, uh, something for more, uh, j just more, more of a corporate environment or specific niche applications. It's basically like I run an Ubuntu server or a Debian server if I'm building out servers from scratch. That's kind of what my take is. So looking everything over, I'm going to lean back to, just because there's so many other Linux distributions that are much more closer to the free and open source world. I don't want a Linux system built and run by Intel who has produced this IME that they will not release the code to the open source communities. That is a serious concern and that's a question we should ask before we start highly recommending clear Linux. Those are my thoughts. Um, you know, I, maybe I'm too tinfoil hatty. I mean, I do have a tinfoil hat over here. Uh, but that being said, those are my thoughts about this. What are your thoughts? Um, and I would definitely encourage you, download a copy, experiment with it, play with it a little bit. Um, test it out on, on both systems. Um, it does apparently work very well with Intel. It is optimized for Intel, um, which is, is a good thing, I think. So it's neat that it's an option. I'm not dissing it at all. It's just that uh, there's enough things in here that make me concerned that I will not recommend it necessarily for somebody switching to Linux for the reason I personally have switched to Linux. That's my thought. Let me know your thoughts. And if you guys really want to see uh, what the distribution looks like, I'll see if I can get a virtual machine. Maybe I can throw Manjaro over here and get the virtual machine running over there better. Uh, so with that being said, thanks for coming along. Leave me your comments. Is this good? Is this bad? Do you fall on this is Linux clarity or this is Linux concern? Let me know in the comments down below. Please keep it civil.